Yeah, sure. We do have a quorum. Uh, first order of business is the approval of the minutes from the April meeting. A motion. <coughs> so moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Yes. Uh, under discussion items, I just wanted to clarify that uh, when I stated I had reviewed the report prepared by the engineer that it was the engineer's opinion that there were no flavor code violations. Any further discussion on the minute? I've got one piece on uh, page four or five at the top facility discussion. I reported there had been several facility community meetings with Bob Worley. We had several facility committee meetings, including one very productive one with Bob Worley, maybe two. But um, I just wanted to clarify, we had one really substantive meeting with Bob Worley. So. Any further discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of approving the minutes from April with those changes made by uh, Jeff and Neil, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, my apologies to everybody who's trying to follow along, but uh, because of some things that are going to happen, we're going to move some agenda items around. So we're going to move next to the approval of the bills and directors' orders. committee for uh, principal. We had 13 people on the committee, including myself, um, parents, students, Casey, um, and Neil was there from, from the board. Uh, we were given the task of um, looking through applicants, deciding who should be interviewed, um, and then last week conducted five interviews, uh, all in one day, so it was kind of a crazy day, um, and made a recommendation um, Tom O'Brien for uh, a candidate, and it was a unanimous decision. You want something to add? Yeah. Um, first of all, my thanks, Deb, for corralling a large group of people. Um, we ran a very clean, very fair evaluation process and came up with a couple of shortlist candidates, couldn't lose, and I just want to report to the board how thrilled I personally am about this particular candidate that's being recommended for approval tonight. She has a very interesting background. You can read about it in her letter. The um, resume is there. You know, I had an opportunity to read a lot more detail in her application. One of the things that really resonated with me was that she has a background in business, spent several years doing that work, left to go raise her kids, became very interested in the school setting by helping out when her kids were growing up. Went back to school to get that degree in education and then entered the school system and went through a pretty rapid trajectory from library sciences into administration. And I think what facilitated that rapid transition was that background in business that allowed her to see sort of the systems and the business operations side as well as the educational side. And, um, I, she, I'm very excited about uh, this woman that's being recommended for you. I don't know, do you want to add something? Because you were there. No, I agree. Um, going to be a great compliment to your skills, Ed. Um, and 
all sorts of opportunities for you know what, what what kinds of models we might discuss in terms of how the administration operates. Um, you know, we did have Sheena did have a uh, in all the candidates had approximately actually in her case about a 25 minute interview walk and talk tour of the school. And it was pretty clear that you know she's and she came highly recommended. I've, I've talked to her principal, her curriculum coordinator, and one of her subordinates, who's a, uh, a teacher leader, uh, at some length. And they are, they are all solidly in her corner, as is her superintendent. And they all echo the same thing, that they really going to hate to lose her. But on the other hand, it was time for her to step up to the plate. And they, they, are, they all have every confidence in the world. I have every confidence in the world after meeting her. And if you remember, she came to one of our board meetings. Uh, she She knew about as much about, uh, about Virginia Union High School as any candidate, you know, I've ever, in any position I've ever been associated with. She really did a lot of homework. She's real smart. And uh, everybody says she's just a real organized and efficient administrator. Everybody I talk to. I actually would like to add one other piece that I remember from the interview process, which was that she was not job hunting. That she saw the position come up around for Jens and was familiar with the programs and, you know, frankly, the, the, the sort of some of the visionary work that's being done here, and she wanted to be part of that. So. So I'm, I'm out with uh, Stephanie uh, for possibly an hour and interview today. Um, and I concur with everything that the folks have said this point. And on your behalf, I offered her a contract for you know, 13, 14 school year and the sum of $85,000. And that's my recommendation to you. So I would like to move that we accept Tom's recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Do you have a coach you want to recommend to our uh, organizing personnel? Um, Peter, you want me to coach? Yeah, do you have the was it any supplemental stuff? Yeah, we uh, ended up with larger numbers than we had anticipated for uh, middle school softball, so in there you had a, uh, a recommendation for a second coach. Uh, Someone who was in the <coughs> excuse me, she actually works in the building. Uh, through CSAC, she's working in the uh, middle school learning center, and she started off by being a, a volunteer assistant with the team. So she's been, you know, right there from the beginning, and now she's kind of leading her her own group. So, is there a motion? I agree with that. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. Any discussion on hiring Sonia Kuzino as a middle school softball? Hearing none, we will proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carried. <coughs> I'd like to move up and uh, speak about uh, the middle school gym teachers. We had an email about a report. Is that something that? Uh, who wants to start that conversation? <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm uh, else sorry. Else. Uh, this, is a okay. um, this is a letter to Bob Worley, who's our head of maintenance and operations, uh, from Lyle Smith, who's a representative from Visbit, the school board insurance. Uh, hi, Robert. I was able to take a look at the bleachers, middle school bleachers, last week after you had indicated that you had received an inspection report stating that the bleachers are no longer considered safe for use. After seeing the bleachers, I must agree that they have become obsolete and so far out of current code that it's time to take them out of service. If the school decides to keep them in use and there is an injury caused by the bleachers, the report would make, the report would make it difficult to defend the school's decision of continued use. 
and I'm Lyle Smith, Physical Spending Consultant. Father, you want to add to that? Yes, sir. Uh, basically, the deletion needed to come out. I, I looked at the governing authority and, and who they look at for guidelines, and I read all the guidelines, about six different um, guidelines, uh, codes, if you will. And I read them all. It was clear that they needed to be pulled. Um, you know, that kind of that makes sense based on the fact that Bob was asking for, for replacement. Uh, I just wanted to get some, uh, some other folks, third party, uh, that knew that knew the situation and knew uh, uh, a little bit about bleachers to, uh, to back me up, which I've done. They need to be pulled. Um, and we can chain them, but it's still not keep individuals off of them. The answer is to replace them, but we can't do that right now. If we do pull them, you're, you're looking at probably $12,500 to cover the, um, the heating elements behind those. Mm -hmm. So no matter what we do, we're going to incur some cost. Uh, you're going to incur twelve five right now, uh, plus my labor. Now, I throw that labor anyway, so I'll have to schedule it. But, um, that there's a cost associated with that. Otherwise, it's, I think, was it 85 or 55,000 dollars we had for the replacement? I can't recall. It was 55. I think it was 55. Right. But, uh, I think the 85 was the, uh, the control that I was asking for downstairs. But, um, uh, you know, you're either going to pay me now or pay me later. It is a little bit cheaper. And, and then I would be apprehensive even you know, once I put that, that time and, and labor in to, uh, Pulling bleachers and, and putting a, an enclosure around the heating elements, and it is true, it's not a wood, it's not it's not schlock at all. Um, it's a, it, it'll look good, and I would be apprehensive of putting bleachers over top of it. Um, I would just say let's just make it a gymnasium for use, and folks come in there watch the uh, no pool game, have to either stand and bring, launch it, I guess. But there, if it's clear, it's, it, there's, there's just no debate. They need no. people. What's your recommendation on when when to do it? You mean do you want to wait until summer until the kids are out of there, or does it need to happen? We had it scheduled um, because of everything else that, that needs that's required to be done in the summer, the downtime, because of the facility's usage during the summer months. Um, with the windows it was probably passed, so um, as soon as you guys concur that I need to pull them, then I'll I'll look at it and I'll figure it out. But it's gonna it's gonna be going to be out there in the future now. So I, I, I okay. don't have a recommendation right now. Okay. I had one uh, you know, two weekends in May, but, but that, that window is because of, of the domino effect of, you know, I, I, had, I had to pull the reins in on getting them out and that affected other, other scheduled activities. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Are there scheduled activities that have to be canceled or? Yeah, well, not canceled, but we'll have to adapt them. And I looked at that, and, and to adapt them would create lots of issues with the uh, with the other staff, and, uh, um, and I, so I just I don't want to manage that. I've already managed. We, we already have a, a, a full a full docket for the summer, and I, I don't want to have to jumble all that up. Uh, we have to replace the uh, basketball standards. We we that I already have. I, I, I'm under that's under control for the for the north south goals. The east and west goals, they have to be removed. You can replace them. They cannot be repaired. They have to be replaced. They have to be taken out. What are we, the basketball hoops, the backstops, or the things the, that come back in this? The whole, the older ones, that the are whole thing, all the mechanical structures, as well as every, everything, all, all the, from, from the wall out. Um, I would just like you to take a look at you mentioned people bringing lawn chairs. Um, I know that. I, I, did, I said that on the chief. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'd rather that we provide any seating that's available. To anything, any, anything you introduce into that gymnasium will have a negative effect on the pool cover. So I, you know, I, I, I'm being. Yeah, I mean, because they just don't understand. But, but you will need, if you're going to have people spectating, if you're going to need to provide until we can replace what's there. I can't find a statute saying that, or a, I, I get it, I get it, I get it, but I get it. And I also understand 
how it's going to be interpreted out in the public. Yeah. We asked for something, voted it down, now we're pulling them out. That's going to be, that's going to be a rough. Well, that's I get real. It. That's, that's real. That's real. I understand that. Yeah. But there, there's going to be. But at the same time, if we we try to work with the spectators and give them some place to sit rather than say, you know, have to stand, it, you know, that'll just further antagonize you know, the situation. So, you know, there's, you can't have elevated seating, obviously, but other events occur in that gym where you provide, we provide seating. So I, I'd like you to take a look at that if you could. Well, what's uh, I, I, I already have, and I have purchased 144 folding chairs yep. for, for events, not necessarily for the middle school, but for, for yep. events. Mm -hmm. And we have, we have an additional 455 or 460 chairs in the facility that we can grab. Um, again, that's, that's, that's labor intensive. But, but if, that's, if that's what we have to do, we can do that. Okay. Yes, sir. What's the time frame for getting the bleachers out now? Excuse me? What time frame do you have for removing those bleachers? It's going to take about 85 man hours to remove them. Um, and it's going to, I do not know, man, I'm, I'm, I are a few for all the, the labor to bring put the closures in um, so because I have a permit. Just to be clear, you, you said you had a couple of weekends in May yeah. originally. You yes. don't have that window anymore? I, 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 I really don't because it's going to affect the high school usage and then the domino effect beyond that. And then and then how I, I put my custodial staff on cleaning the, the sectors of the facility. Do you have a new window? No. It, it, as soon as you folks say that you know you approve it, then I'll just look at it and figure out what we're going to do it. Sooner the better, because it's, we're in violation right now. Well, so. I recommend the board authorize uh, to take whatever action needs to remove the commission from the waste commission. Before you vote, we're not, we're not subject, we're not in, in any uh, hazard of being fined or anything like that. Uh, we have a very good rapport with, with those inspectors, and they, they know that we're, we're trying to, to fix it. Not really worried about that aspect of it. I mean, the, 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 the letter from our um, insurer is fairly crystal clear to me as to the need for these things to be uh, taken out of service. So I'll, I'll make a motion to accept Tom's recommendation and, and have you do your work as soon as you can. As soon as it's seconded, we'll just see. Is there a second for that one? Second. Discussion, Dave, you had something you want to say? I was just wondering, uh, is, uh, replacing the bleachers, is that dependent upon the next spawn? I, I, I mean, that's the scenario. Scenario. maybe you could just take out half now so you got some seating and then replace the other half. No, I, no. I, I can't see not taking things out if we right. have a letter from our insurer saying that if anything happens, they won't support us. Oh, if that's the case, then I guess yeah. you don't have any choice. No, we don't. Um, that really feels to this business, this, this facilities committee, so the two of us and Jeff, more like a kind of a program that into the annual budget maintenance thing as opposed to part of the bond. You know, we'll see how that all comes together. We'll see what happens tomorrow night first. <laughs> Is there any further discussion on the Well. Uh, Jeff, go ahead. I, I, uh, while I support the administration taking the action that's necessary to keep everybody who uses that facility safe, we don't know why the board would be voting on that action as opposed to other facilities matters. We're not borrowing money. This is an administrative item. It's not a board thing. Mm -hmm. My problem is going to be the public action. Well, maybe just understood sense of the board, perhaps, but you don't want us approving each and every activity here. So maybe a sense of the board is what you're seeking. We certainly didn't want to do it without the board's Thank you. Uh, support. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. That's why we brought it to you. Actually, we brought it to you. So, <laughs> we brought it to you. Yeah. so you know, I don't, I don't, I agree with Jeff. I don't think we actually have to to move and, and approve what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. But I, I would strongly recommend that you do some. If you're not going to take them out immediately, that they somehow, you know, not used. 
immediately. Because uh, that letter was pretty specific. Yep. Uh, and that's exactly what I asked Peter when I talked to him. You know, I wanted to have um, someone tell us that they were unsafe, that was a, a you know, an authority. And that, that's, uh, you know, the insurer is probably more authoritative than, you know, having, more scary to me than having a law, uh, in a sense. Because if it was a law, we'd be, we've already been breaking the law for many years. I, so I appreciate you bringing it to our attention. I think you're getting the support of the board for the action, the fact that we've got a backup plan so that we will be providing some seating. I think it does speak to the public, you know, that, that we understand that there'll be some inconvenience and we're trying to mitigate that. You know, and we're doing what we need to do to keep everybody safe. So with that being said, we want to put your motion on the floor. Or would you like to be I'm happy to withdraw it. Motion to withdraw. But the consensus is do what you need to do. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Fun with that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Might be some use for some of the wood. I appreciate it to my job easier. <laughs> All right, um, let's finish board communications and do the graduation schedule. Who's doing that? Graduation schedule? If I could then just see, there was also a uh, Following in our conversation, there was a question about uh, uh, the, the report from the auditorium. And I, I don't know whether that's something that the, that the board wants to address tonight or in a subsequent meeting. Uh, what Peter's referring to is there was a letter from March from the Department of Health that looked at the air quality issues. And, focused on the results of that, uh, but at the end of that letter were a series of recommendations that dealt primarily with cleaning of the facility. And since we you know, won't be undertaking major renovation um, in the near term, we do hope to deal with heating and ventilation in the near term, but other than that, it may be a while. I would be interested in knowing the administration's response to what, how do we get a handle on what needs to be cleaned up and so that the environment uh, is more conducive to the healthy and as well. Would you um, like an oral report at this time? Would you prefer that the board get a, a written report before the next board meeting? Uh, if, if it's brief, if you could just let us know, you know what you're thinking of, that would be great. We're going to defer to Robert Worley because what I don't know about cleaning uh, 60 feet up in an auditorium speaks legions. I'd rather answer specific questions. I mean, you know me by now. I mean, I, um, the, if you read, it is, it's correct. If you go back, if you go to the very last page, you give some recommendations. Um, he gave us a, it was a good report. Y'all read it? Everyone has read it? So you know, it was a good report um, because it, you know, they recognized that, that, that y'all doing a great job with, with, with the tools that you have. Um, but he recognized that we need to, uh, you know, we need to get some professional help in here. And that, and I haven't, I read your email that you sent to Ms. Kathy. Um, I have not, are if you need any uh, any costs associated with that. That's going to be salty. I mean, I'm not afraid of that. What I am afraid of is what he mentioned in here about what we're going to find. And and I cannot if I if I find something, I have to act on it. And and I'm not I, I'm not sticking my head in the sand or anything like that. By no means. By no means. But. If I, if I find something that's not code compliant, saying it's a bleacher, I'm compelled to go look at it. And, I'm, and, and, I, and I have to resolve it. Wherever, wherever those chips may fall. And I'm afraid, I'm afraid of that, uh, that uh, HVAC in there. And I'm afraid of what I'm going to find when I get up into that roof. Um, 
And then they open up a can of worms that we're going to have to take into action from that. And, 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 and chain to chain, it's going to be cost. And I don't have that money right now. Um, so, so I can get up there. I can, I can have now. We can do the seats. And we, we all, at year when we do the, the carpets, um, and, and some of you have gone back, I know you've been there, you've been back there, you've been back there. All four of you have been back there, you've been back there also. I think you were down when we dug the hole right through the, uh, through the, the front, I don't even know what that's called, the fifth term in front of the stage. But um, I can't clean that curtain. If I put that, that curtain's going to fall apart as soon as I touch it. Um, so, so I need a little guidance. I don't need any guidance. I mean, I, 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 mean, I know what I need to do, but you guys just need to be aware of it. So if I find something, and we're going to find something if we get up there, it's in the air. Yeah, and, the, and if I hire, if I, if I hire um, Jones LLC to come in and, and clean this, they're going to be compelled to tell me, I, we got to stop because we found an issue, and they're going to have to tell somebody. That's just the way it is. So. so. Um, when you say issues, you're talking about danger to. I uh, read the report. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I just I don't want to tell you what I know about plants, but I, but, but I'll just read his report. Um, he. Uh, I know. I've, I've read it. Bob. Okay. I'm, so I'm just right. saying when you say you go into the ventilation system, you're anticipating what you might find. I'm anticipating what you're talking about. I'm assuming what you're talking about is something that could be dangerous, unhealthy. That's correct. Right. Okay. Um, if that's the case, I believe that in any situation where we have those circumstances that the, the board's in a position where it um, can borrow the money without you. Right, but remember, I, I've had third-party testing already, and we're okay right now, yep. as long as I don't serve it. Yep. Once I serve it, maybe a whole different... So. So I, I think we need to take this in pieces, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, the, the first step would be to take that letter and turn it into some specific actions, which we can talk about outside the, the I can do that, thank you, that's just about done. I can do that and submit it to, to, to uh, two principals who then can submit it to Ms. Kathy and Mr. O'Brien, and then they can, they can forward the all and then get the deal. And, and it is the intent, I think I can say this fairly, that we intend to be looking at the auditorium as part of the next phase of, of the Absolutely. So Absolutely. the areas that you're concerned about are areas that we would expect to be dealing with in the in the near term. Neil, you had something? Yeah, I just want to sort of compliment what um compliment what Jeff is saying. I think it would be helpful to take it in steps. We're having kind of a, a scattery conversation about this right now. The letter's got some specific recommendations, as Jeff suggests. Maybe if you could work that into your plan for how to deal with those and also articulate in that what you think the risks are of going in the HVAC and sort of spell those out. I really want to get past tomorrow night before we talk about any other facilities pieces because, you know, that'll be, that'll speak volumes if tomorrow night we don't have a successful vote, then we've got bigger fish to fry. Um, but, you know, maybe if it works for our next month meeting or whenever, you know, it, it fits with the schedule that you have laid out, bleachers, shutting the school down, getting the work going. Um, I think it would be good to hear that, hear what the plan is, what could be accomplished over the summer. I'm, for, as a board member, I can't be scared of what we might find. Um, you know, if I'm worried that I've got a really serious issue in my roof, I don't want to not touch it because I'm concerned that it's serious. I want to go up there and try and deal with it before it gets worse. I know you know this. You're in charge of the building. I don't think we're scared of anything. I just uh, we just need to understand yeah. that, that we start disturbing things, we're going to find things, and Absolutely. we're going to have to act on. And we have been public about that from day one with our efforts to you know work. So we find intractable issues. I'll have it in front of the principals in two weeks or less, so they can uh, they can review it, edit it, and pour it on. And can we touch that again at the June meeting? Yep. Is that good, Jeff? Right. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Graduation schedule, Mr. Wood. Yes, sir. Okay, on May 30th, which is a Thursday, uh, we will be distributing caps and gowns. It's a low, low price of $22 on that day, $27 out of what afterwards. That night, 
that evening at six o'clock in the evening at out of the <coughs> Walden uh, project is the Walden. It says graduation, but it's not a graduation. It's their completion program. And at seven o'clock, uh, the Hanford completion program in Mount Avery, which gives me a chance to maybe get to the second half of the Hanford completion program from Walden. They're asking that we not schedule over the same night sixth year in a row. Um, on June 1st is the uh, Virginia Junior High School Alumni Dinner. Uh, students uh, are welcome to attend for $5, it's a bargain. Um, scholarships are awarded only to those who attend. So the scholarships that are generated by the alumni will only be given if the attendees are there. Uh, June 2nd, uh, is the baccalaureate, that is uh, Sunday night in the auditorium. Uh, maybe they will say a prayer for us. Uh, a baccalaureate has been fairly consistently um, carried out by the local clergy, and uh, our students have been participating at the rate of about a half to two-thirds of the class, depending on the year. Uh, we slipped actually under half last year. Uh, it's non-sectarian, and it is one of the, really one of the last surviving baccalaureates in the state. I mean, there's, they're dropping like flies all the time. But this is not a school function, technically. It, this is a function in which the clergy um, rent our, rent our uh, auditorium and use it uh, for the good of our children. On June 4th is Senior Awards Night at 6 o'clock p.m. We try to keep everything at 6 o'clock. Um, that's on Tuesday. It's, uh, we have combined um, Senior Awards Night with Scholarship Night, and uh, we're trying to keep it under, oh, we're trying to keep it under an hour and a half. I don't think that's possible. Um, June 5th uh, is DO graduation. Diversified Occupations Program. We have quite a few of our students there, and they're going to be graduating down in Middlebury Assist. And then finally on June 7th, on Friday, um, we have a senior and parent barbecue from 11 to 12.30 out back. Uh, Bob will remove the dumpsters temporarily and uh, we, so we can eat with some uh, relish and not Dread. No mustard. No mustard. Uh, and then at six o'clock in the evening, graduation in the new gym. And, uh, and our, I will not give. Should I give away the guest speaker? No. Oh, okay. I, her initials are pretty short. <laughs> <laughs> so and then I've got the kids have mandatory marching practice on the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh from one to three o'clock. And if you need, if you have any questions, anybody in the public has any questions, uh, you can call Rose Russell, who's one of the graduation uh, coordinators. So that's graduation. Six o'clock Friday. Everything's at six. 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 Yes. <laughs> Everything's at six. Thank you, man. be possible or could we think about an idea of putting our meetings into a Google Calendar so that we could see when they are, when they change, you could send me messages and do other such things like that? Because we're getting, I mean, I, I get at the bottom of the page here all of these different meetings and different times and it would be just really useful if it was just, you know, the regular board meeting, the, the, the special meeting that we're having for this, that we're doing for that, you know, maybe it's a bond or something of that sort, or maybe it's the supervisory union meetings in one Google Calendar that then I could then link to my phone or other things and would get automatic updates. We did just um, upgrade our AWSU mm -hmm. website and there's a Google Calendar on there, and I'm just learning how to access okay. so, <laughs> all so those points. Works. <laughs> Yeah, okay. we had to redo our website because of um, above the Google program itself. So it's now a Google website, and Bob has converted the calendar, so he's showing me how to 
do all that stuff. So eventually they will come. Yes, eventually. Right. <laughs> cool. Um, mixing things up again, and I want to go to the student representatives because I know Tom, Tommy and these are already 45 minutes late for baseball practice. <laughs> I want to be respectful for that. Right. Uh, so, uh, earlier this last month, we had a Williamsburg band trip uh, and how they heard of the success. Both the band, the jet, or all three groups that went band and jet did, of course, took home three golds. Um, it's pretty impressive. Uh, also in the music world, this last weekend was the All-State Music Festival. We had 11 students from Virginia participating, staying with host families in the Jericho area, and rehearsing over a period of three days for about 16 to 20 hours, culminating in a concert on, well, throughout Saturday. Uh, and it was pretty successful. Then prom was Saturday night, and it did the weekend. Um, and that was also successful. I'm not sure how much money we made as a junior class, but it was a good time. And I All right, um, and then this week, uh, and, uh, uh, the juniors had their recap testing on Tuesday and Wednesday. And um, during that time, the other classes will be out and about doing some of things. Uh, the freshman class will be at the Opera House working on PBGRs. Uh, the sophomores are going to be doing AYP testing on Tuesday, and then they're going to be throughout the community doing uh, different service projects on Wednesday. Juniors are testing. And then the seniors, um, tomorrow we're going to Camp to Come Death, uh, which is something that we actually started doing, I guess, when I was a freshman, we started doing it then. And we've gone up ever since, so we're looking forward to that. We're going to be building bleachers and planting flowers and just getting them ready for the summer. You did in wood? <laughs> <laughs> I already attempted that. <laughs> Maybe you could build us some bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> and then on Wednesday, uh, we're going to be going and doing back to our roots again. Uh, also, this year, though, we have added the Christian school, and they're going to be doing a hike up Mount Kaiba. Also, this week on Thursday, we're having another blood drive for the Indian Cross, and that's going to be sponsored, run by Mr. Powers. Um, yeah, well, we're going to have this around. Some student councils talked about, uh, and some friends have talked to me about, adding some color to the white walls of the school. And I don't know if this is the place to bring it up, but I thought I mentioned this the school board. Um, in William, that's a picture from Williamsburg. What they've done is they've given each senior kind of a brick, and they did a senior brick thing where each uh, senior painted their brick. Eddie might have talked to you about this. Um, and that was something that a lot of my friends have talked to me about and expressed interest in doing. And uh, it might be something that the class 2014 does, or looks into next year, um, assuming that we get permission. So it's just, so what wall do you have in mind? Not sure yet, but there's a lot of bricks in the school. By the way, there are. There's um, a lot of bricks in the wall. <laughs> 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 and then you can paint it over for the next year? Um, yeah, or maybe in another class we take a different area and search in Sam for a few years before they repair. Um, I think there's a lot of options that we can consider with it, but just now one of them. Write it up. Yep. Yeah. And I think that's all I That's it for us. Thank you very much. Have a good practice. Thank you. Sure. Um, just by virtue of the fact that you said the juniors are having the kneecap testing, the eighth graders are too. Yeah. Um, I didn't know if either of you are represent the middle school. Um, do, we, do we have a middle school representative? Yeah, we're have we ever? Yeah. Have we ever? There's never been one. Yeah. Is that me? <laughs> that might be something we look into. Um, one last thing, is this not the meeting in which we thank you for your service, Casey? Oh, yeah, yes. Thank you. 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 And I did have one other question. How are the senior privileges working out? Oh, yeah. Good. There hasn't been any issues. Um, I do have to say, I haven't actually gotten to go out. <laughs> 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 really underused. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just following up the 
you know, make sure that if it is a privilege, it's being used and mm -hmm. haven't heard anything. So. Okay. <clears throat> Educational presentation. Okay to pick up there? Wait, we have a couple. I'll be very, very brief. Um, my name is Cookie Steph. When you came in, there were slides playing from the Savannah, Georgia trip. I'm not going to take your time to ask you to sit through them, but simply to give you a visual as to the power of some of the some of the experiences that the that the, the traveling allows our students to do. Um, the reason I'm coming to you this evening is because the standard protocol has been if we go to a different place we need your permission. And this year's trip was highly successful but in thinking about next year's we decided to request from you um, a West Point Gettysburg Philadelphia Washington swing cutting the cost, cutting the distance, opening it probably up to maybe as much as 15 or 20 more students. I could fill your ears for hours with the aha moments, with the, with the huge amount of learning that went on. Um, you know, when you've got kids that it's their first ocean, um, that, that just starts you there, and you build from the wonder of that. So the request, um, is in your package. Uh, the proposal is for the same week in March of 2014. The destination changing. The cost is dropped approximately $700 from what this year's kids paid, which would open it up to a wider audience with less fundraising required. And I was here to answer any questions the board might have and to request your permission to put us on the calendar for next year. Sounds great. It's again 16 hours a day. It's it's packed. You know they're they're in motion until late night, and then we go to bed, and security comes on, and everybody gets a good night's sleep. They didn't as much as move. <laughs> all, all the security reports went, no activity, no activity, no activity, you know, all the way down through the... Well, we need to talk. We need to motion on this, or is this just a requirement? Sounds great. Yeah, is there a minimum number that you need to take? This uh, year's only, we had not yet nine students this year. Well, 12 students. Mm -hmm. Basically, anything below 15 and it becomes cost prohibitive. Um, our largest expense is the coach and the diesel fuel to use it. You know, um, hotel rooms and the other things, a lot of what we do is actually free. So you're paying about 65% of your transportation. Therefore, the more bodies on the bus, the less of the cost, you know, spread out. It's simple mathematics. Um, there's little I can do on my end to trim that cost because Premier is already giving us a 55 passenger coach at a 35 passenger rate. So, you know, we have a great deal of interest this year. Uh, there's probably about 15 already knocking down my door and Ms. Taylor saying, where, where are we going next year? We want to sign up, so. I would anticipate you'll be, when we stay closer to home, we average 25 to 30 students is usually what goes on the shorter trips because the cost becomes more conducive and the fundraising required is less usually. So the kids are looking at around $1,400 or so a person. Yes, or less. And then you did fundraising last year, right? We did. This past year? Um, it would be it would be $1,300, yes, $1,400. Um, we had one young lady that between the American Legion, the Rotary, and Women of Wisdom was unable to go that would not have been otherwise. And to be honest with you, I stepped in at the last minute and paid one student as well. So, yes. Well, I believe uh, the board concurs with the uh, support. It. And we're supporting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Social Good. studies course proposal. Yes. Good evening. 
I'm Becca Coffey, I'm the Social Studies Department Chair. We're, we were, oh, and last time I believe gave you a handout um, articulating our proposal from the department um, about a need we have in the department. We are, we have to have three and a half credits Carnegie units um, for graduation for each student. I am looking to, usually that oh, ninth grade is a world cultures um, unit of course. Then we have US history for 10th graders. And then the third elective, the third course, so to speak, that you need to take are electives. And so you can put together a hodgepodge of different things. Um, it could be anything from world co conflicts for half a credit, to psychology for half a credit. Um, you could take um, AP current Euro. events, thank you, AP Euro, humanities. And so it, it's kind of haphazard at this moment. We are finding that our students have a gap in civics and economics, which seems like a huge deficit um, considering the world we live in. Um, it, it seems to me that what a social studies student should know are your civics and economics. How does our political system work? How does our economic system work? How does um, the local, national, global economies, political systems play into each other? Um, so this was really to look, so we started to talk about this in our department. And it, it led to numerous conversations with former students. Um, the PBGR group, who's putting together performance-based graduation requirements, it, um, those sorts of things, that we started having these bigger conversations and identifying what our students need. Um, so what we're asking is, it's, instead of having that third um, required elective hodgepodge, is to have 11th and 12th graders take a new course called Modern Citizenship that addresses civics and economics um, directly. And they could take it as an 11th or 12th grader. It doesn't matter which year, but at some point before they leave. And so what we're looking at is just kind of a shift from the electives into the uh, more concrete. I didn't know if we had a chance to look at um, the proposal at this point was very rough. I was trying to get things together. I took departments, uh, other members from the department, their ideas, and put them into our union before So, I, um, I have two things to, to add to what you suggest. I'm, I'm in favor of it. Um, I, I also would like to see maybe it be a, a class that an entire grade takes. And here's where, what I'm thinking. Uh, my experience at South Burlington was all the seniors took the same class in their senior year called Public Issues and World Affairs, uh, PY. And it was actually the only course I had to take. Um, so it, it really brought the class together. It gave us a, a, a place to talk about um, what was going on in the world. And um, it might be something that you look at uh, as part of adding this to the curriculum. And the second thing, I, I, I noticed that you put social justice in there. And I, I don't know if you cover that in any of your other courses, but if, if you could somehow find how to, to get people to understand the link between environmental awareness and social justice, um, I think that would be a very um, important thing to teach. Yeah, to address that first um, idea with the seniors like taking it together for a piece of bond and um, community making. The one thing that we had talked about with Ed and um, Carol Spencer and I was that having seniors and their options, um, such as Hannah Burks as an option, Walden as an option. So this offering at 11th and 12th grade gave flexibility. Yeah. So that's, that was the other thing we were trying to juggle and understand. Um, and just so that it makes our learning pathways a little bit more open. Yep. But I totally agree that it is nice to have all seniors or all juniors who are going through the same experience. Because yeah. you, you, that, that way you create a community. Right. And what you're trying to do is teach how to be civic in a community. Right. 
So. And that's another piece of this is that with the PDGR number two, which is about um, all about being a citizen right. and how to be a contributing citizen in our world. And so I've already started talking with um, Shannon Hyatt on um, the planning commission in town. Um, he wants more community representative and, um, and more voice for students in those sorts of um, planning and board sort of negotiations um, to start exposing students to that. And so I've started having those conversations and would love to talk to different boards in our communities and start to have mentorships between our students and all of these great civic opportunities. And so what we're looking at is the final performance assessment would be a task where they, it's inquiry, where a student has to propose a question that they want to investigate. And it could be a civics um, question, it could be an economics question, such as with the police station going up and it, it being voted down, looking at what the pros and cons to that, and is this the appropriate place for the police station, or is there a better, is there a better solution, those sorts of ideas. So they're looking at a problem that's real, and then having a community mentor who sort of walks them through what's going on. So the, the, the hard pieces of this are finding all the mentors for a whole semester worth of students. So, but at the same time, I think it's a valuable piece of learning where they have to have some community service and mentorship right here. Um, so those are, those are the big pieces. This is something we've been, we proposed a shift in the, in the curriculum when Katie Cabelli was here. Yeah. All right, so that was a little while ago, and uh, and it's obvious that we're a little deficit as far as every kid getting a background in economics and in civics. I mean, it was scattershot if you if one got that. Um, Becca's done a marvelous job of bringing bringing that all together because it's been a long time coming. And so now, when you see we've got a, a personal finance requirement which is the only one in the state, by the way, the state's looking at making ours a model for the rest of the state. And now if we have this, which would cover macroeconomics and civics and voting, and, uh, and I, I, I don't think personal finance quite get into banking. I think that's the no man's land between micro and macro. And I just think that this is going to create a much more well-rounded citizen. And it gives a lot more intentionality to our social studies program, which is pretty good. And th this could put it over the top. And I, I thanks for doing that, because that was a lot of work. Can I say one? Sure. sure. Um, I also, I don't, I don't know how many golfers we have here, but there was a golf tournament this weekend. And it was sponsored by PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, and they actually uh, advertised that they are giving schools hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, in order to make students more financially aware. So that might be somewhere that you can look if you're looking for fun. So Becca, the idea is that this would replace the, um, the elective. You're required to take an elective here, there, or there, and you just replace that with this class. Right, that's the trade-off. Yeah. Um, so that way you're not tapping, you're not dinging some other piece of, a, a, you know, a kid's program. Exactly. So it would be replacing all of those electives, which are wonderful because they provide such a variety mm -hmm. um, and give students a lot of choice. But we just feel like this need is there. There would also, we would also still offer some of the elect, higher level electives, such as APs and humanities. Mm -hmm. um, but it is, it is cutting into that electives. Right. But it seems, I mean, I love the content. Um, I, I almost think some really forthright discussion with um, Steve Orzak to create a bridge between his uh, class, which is usually sophomores, right? I mean, to prerequisite the two, to prerequisite this with that could be powerful because you guys can make a really neat package. And, and Steve's part of our department, mm -hmm. um, technically, so he is, he's been part of this conversation from the get-go. Um, and if we get the go-ahead on this, we'll be working this summer. Um, we're funded by the, the Nellie Manny extra money that was mm -hmm. received by Christine. She's put that in because we're working on the PDGR task also with this. 
we're getting funding for that. So we'll be working as a department to put this all together and a cohesive curriculum so that it will be together, not for this coming fall, but the fall after. So that we're, when we start, we're ready, fully put together. <laughs> and then you bring up that point since so this is the first course that's been designed specifically with PBGRs in mind. Everything else we're adapting the PBGR to the course. Right. This course is designed around the PBGR process. So it's kind of it's kind of like the beginning of something really cool. I love the idea of attaching a student in each class to some local board, be it planning commission, regional planning commission. These young men and women who sit here, you know, and listen right. to us go on and on. They should get something for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and it's so good to get them started and involved right early because then they become more comfortable. And sure. it's less intimidating when they are 18 and voting and trying to make decisions. Is this a vote or a consensus? When you change credits, I think it may rise to a vote. Okay, no climate, right? Um, is there a motion? Can I ask a question? I just have you guys decided what you're going to eliminate for sure yet in terms of classes that they're offering now? There were some cuts made this um, this year. Um, our we have three um, social studies teachers and Steve, who's half social studies, half tech. Mm -hmm. um, so we've had to make some cuts because scheduling becomes really difficult. We all, we're a small department that offers quite a bit. Um, and so those are conversations that um, guidance had and administration had, um, and I was part of to a certain extent, and in anticipation of this course coming. Um, I also will, I'm thinking the students, it would be great to get their input over the next few weeks over what courses um, they would like to see stay, um, just so then we can start to move forward with that for next year's scheduling. So are there classes that students have signed up for the next year that might not happen? No, nope. all of those are in place. Oh, okay. This is for the next fall. Oh. Okay. Any for a motion to improve the real course? Second. As required for it. As required for it. As a, a required credit, so that means the same size of classes, say a math class or a French two or AP. It would be a credit once one semester, so right. it's every day for seventy five minutes. Yep. So just like AP later. Well, no. Integrated like AP, but okay. AP, regular standard one credit. U.S. history. Okay. All right. Or work culture. Yeah. Yep. So the junior class this year would be required to take that class. Sorry. No, trying to do the math. Because it wouldn't be ready by this fall and the schedules are already occurred. So we have a motion on the floor that's been seconded to approve this uh, course proposal as we require the ready. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Sustained. Motion carried. Thank you. Isn't that fun putting it together? Thanks. It's always fun. Okay. <laughs> Athletic policy changes. Is that here? Is there a view? Is there a view? So in your packet, you should have for the uh, current policy in regards to the uh, substance abuse. And in there I highlighted in yellow kind of a, a small tweak that we're looking to make and the reasoning behind that before you know Eric speaks is uh, the current policy if you're caught breaking the uh, substance abuse year, you know, depending on what step you are for second or third, you're out <coughs> for a certain amount of games. And during that time frame, the way the policy reads is you're also out from practices during that time you're basically you know shunned from the team while you're serving your suspension um, and in some cases depending on when you're caught that can be a month you know a month and a half um, to some cases as little as a week um, so this year we had a student who uh, is here today to, uh, to talk to you who was uh, 
in that substance abuse and the KMC, you know, Mr. Webley and myself following the, uh, the suspension that was handed down not to appeal the number of games that to be missed, but to appeal being away from the team and had reasons um, why being away from the team in his mind and his team had come to see me um, in their mind why having Eric outside the team for a month and a half wasn't beneficial to him. Um, and that's where you know Eric came presented some stuff and part of his you know process is to present to you guys and explain to you why for him and for other kids that piece of not being allowed to be part of the team while they're serving their suspension um, is something that we're looking to the possibly change. So I'll let Eric talk and we can go forward. All right. Um, so I wrote a little thing here uh, saying, what does lacrosse or being on a team mean to me? Um, I want to start off with saying hello school board, superintendent, principals, and student rep. My name is Eric Averill. I am proposing a changing a rule. When an athlete is in trouble, their consequence is to serve three games and miss all the practices prior. Um, I'm asking if there can be a change to remove the student from the three games, depending on their situation. However, but, however, to allow them to continue to practice so they're not shunned from the team, but they're there, and so they don't get severely hurt when they come back if they can't be at practice. My rationale around that is that Everyone learns essential skills in different environments, the classroom, playing field, and the community all play a role in determining how someone holds themselves. The classroom provides information for my success. However, it does not allow the interaction of friends to happen. On the field, I learn to trust my teammates. We're all brothers on and off the field and to deal with the problems and to hold myself to my guiding principles. I know that my actions off the field determine and reflect who I am on the field. One day my athletic career will come to an end and I'll be left with the memories. But however, when a kid is not at practice, they pretty much aren't there, they're not getting chemistry, they're not there to support their team, they're just shunned away. Um, so I'm just looking for a change in that. But to serve the three-game suspension is very reasonable in my mind. So. Thank you, Eric. Well done. About that. Thank you. Now, one of the one of the issues here is that you know, I'm speaking as a coach. Three things have come on. Uh, Eric has covered tobacco. All right, that was the. That was the sin. And there's there's <coughs> three aspects to this, and I, I'm sorry if I'm kind of, this is probably what you were gonna say, but there's three things that are really going on. One is that the headmasters, headmasters the Vermont Principal Association, athletic rules, and this particular rule, dovetail in this way, he needs 10 practices to get eligible, all right? If he can't practice for X number of weeks, it, it grows because he because he can't get his ten practices in, so he's never eligible until halfway through the season. That's that's number one. Number two, the last thing you want a kid who has a propensity to smoke a cigarette or dip some tobacco is to give him more free time in the afternoon to do so. And what you want to do is reel him in and have him with his role models and his and his coach <coughs> contributing to the common good. And I think the third thing that Eric brings out is that it. It, it it's a healthy alternative to the to being shunned. I know as a coach, and this is my third point. When I was a wrestling coach, and I had a kid break training, I didn't want him away from the wrestling mat. I wanted to just absolutely make his life miserable for that for the next three weeks. You know, I mean, we do you know monkey we do you know monkey drills and shark bait and everything until you know the cows came home because he needed to get in better shape because he broke in training. And I, I think that it's a commonsensical thing to allow a kid to practice and to disallow him to, uh, to compete. 
Is there anything I missed? No, I, I think to echo what you're saying, I mean, number one, you know, like you brought up the, uh, the 10 practices of the BPA rule. Um, and depending on when you get caught, if you get caught breaking that violation, you know, it extends things out. But that's the choice, you know, the kids made by choosing to, you know, do whatever to break the, uh, the substance abuse. But the main point in this and what I got, you know, from Eric when he came to me is, you know, look, Pete, here's the deal. I need to be with my team because my team is going to hold me accountable. They're going to make sure that I'm not going further and doing the things that I shouldn't be doing. If I'm not with the team for the next month and a half, I can tell you right now, I'm not going to have the support that I need to not do it again, you know, not fall into that. And that was the same thing I got from his captains. Look, haven't served the game, suspension, whatever, haven't served extra games, but we want to keep an eye on him because we know that if we're not there with him to help and guide him down you know, the right path, the chances are he's going to go down the wrong one. Um, what can we do here? You know, and that's where we made the, uh, the, the decision at and I um, to allow him to practice during that time, serve the games, and part of that was to come here and express that you know, to you guys so that you understood it's not about trying to get out of games. It's not about trying to get out of the suspension. It's about using that team as a support system. And right now, the way the policy is worded, it doesn't allow that team to be the support system that some kids, you know, in this case, Eric, need. And that's what we're looking to uh, have your support to change. Neil. So, um, Peter. Hmm? Oh. Um, says, you know, if students who are team members and are reported with you to possess uh, or possess tobacco, alcohol, and drug are referred to you, which may result in these consequences in addition to those in the handbook. So what does the handbook say? Because the policy as it reads appears to give you some discretion. The handbook is what I printed out there for you when I sent you. That is Describe also okay, so elsewhere in the student handbook. So what are the other consequences? described in the student him. I'm sorry, I don't know. I think that would fall under Ed and Pete in terms of, you know, drinking and, and being suspended from school is my guess. I don't know. I'm see, I'm just, what I'm, I'm reading the words on the page and I see there's some discretion given specifically to you to, you know, read out the situation and decide how heavy-handed to be. Yep. Um, so I'm wondering whether by removing these words, that that then removes for you a tool that you may in some odd instance, and I understand what you're saying, here, but you know, you don't have to do this. It says you may do this. Um, if you come into a situation where somebody does something so egregious that you can't have them interacting with the team, I'm thinking of some outrageous situation, maybe you need the ability to say, oh, I'm sorry, you can't come to practice. I'm sort of playing devil's advocate, you know. Um. Yeah, um, I understand what you're saying. I think there's always that flexibility, you know, with it to, you know, make the decision to see fit. Um, I think in this case, it's you know what we're looking for is to. Here's what it is. You know, here's the, you know, the minimum that you got to go, and then if we want to extend beyond there, you know, obviously there's that, you know, ability that but um, you know maybe you're right maybe we don't need to necessarily change anything uh, I don't want you to get the wrong idea I, I totally understand what you're saying about you know the kids need to be working out with the team exercising practicing but I'm just reading that the policy as it sits does appear to give you the flexibility um, as to what to choose Here's the word man Maybe am I reading it? I, I, I'll, I'll, that's, that, that's my set. Where are you now? Yeah, where are you? Where are you? The bottom of the first paragraph. The second last sentence. Substance use of these policies. So while you're reading that, I, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll take the other side of the argument, and that is that, you know, with, without that detail in there, you still have maximum flexibility. So with it in there, uh, with the detail in there that all practices must be met, um, puts the burden on, on Peter mm -hmm. to 
say why he doesn't have to miss those practices. So I think if you take take the detail out, that gives Peter more flexibility to make the decisions and gives him the responsibility to look for allows them to exercise the responsibility uh, with greater flexibility. So I think I so I see a word tweak um, that might meet what you're saying. But I think yeah. in a situation where a student arrives in a severely compromised state and puts his teammates into you know a significant safety hazard potential. You know, maybe wielding a knife, maybe being crazy, maybe on the wrong substance. Um, and so you just can't have this guy around, although it's the first, you know, instance. Obviously that's violating other rules in the, in the handbook. Maybe the tweak is to say, and may include all practices during that time, which allows you to think through, you know, where you're where you getting tobacco or where you, you know, completely inebriated and being unsafe to yourself and your, and your teammates. Because I think in the end, it's really, isn't it up to you as the AD and the coach to, you know, read out the situation and decide the appropriate level of um, consequence? Yeah. So just take it out. And because it says 25% um, of the events during that activity. So why do you have to further define one of those events. 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 Yeah, because be the I event guess. is a game, the event is a practice, mm -hmm. the event is fundraising, the event is tournaments, mm -hmm. the event is anything that has to do with that activity. And you're right, you're right. Just take so, the light, yep. You know, make it period and you know why why call out one and not all of the events. Tom, did you have a point? Well just I think uh, reading has been that the event is the actual game Correct. as opposed to a practice. Well, and in this case, I mean, that's clearly defined because it's the events and all practices during that time. Um, and for some, you know, it's the entire season. And for others, like I said, it could be as little well as, you know, a week. So I'm going to call on my experience as a contract administrator. If, uh, if you want a word to mean something, then you define it. Uh, if you don't want it to mean, you know, if you don't want it to be defined as a specific thing, you don't define it. And then it's up to the responsibility of the individual to define it. So um, either define what event means or make a general. Right, and I think that's basically what I was looking to do is, you know, what I had highlighted in both the I was just taking out, you know, so to go back to what you just said a minute ago, is and you know right there a quarter of the events during that activity period yeah. and the story and then you know we read the situation to define from that point what that activity you know happens to be whether it, you know it's a game practice you know make the the call from there where it's not as defined as it is right here and then we're in that gray area for you know how we read the situation in this case and adjust it compared to that case and adjust it, you know. Yeah, so if, it, if, if event is not defined, then... We, we're up and this is Pete's uh, consequences are following my consequences, yeah. which is, for instance, if it's drinking, it's a 10-day suspension, reducible to a three-day out of school suspension, as long as they agree to see the, uh, the Drug and Alcohol Council. Um, so that's three days you can't practice anyway because you're not in school. So I mean, you know, you could see a um, circumstance like this one that would that would eat up most of the crosses one way or the other. And um, you know, and I thank you, Eric, for doing this tonight because I think that's a brave thing you did. And I appreciate it. Is this a high school only, middle school, high school only policy, or is this national wide? I couldn't tell you what the yeah, elements are. Not as yeah, this is in our handbook, is it? In the district policy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where I was going with that is if it was district wide, we really couldn't take action on this. It would have to come from the SU board. This is specifically high like school. Okay. There, there could be an implication on days when we have in school suspensions and kids are, and they can't play in a game because they're not present for class. The question is whether that would also apply to practices in that setting. So I don't know whether it's linked to whether we, but that's a conversation we need to, to have. But it's the same kind of reason. 
except for the particular offense. Um, how about um, the uh, discussion that Peter and Ed uh, and Peter have heard today? They uh, go back to the wrong work and back in the and changes as um, suggested. I was kind of thinking that myself. Everybody in agreement? Yeah. Good. Yeah, just one other comment. I don't, I don't think anybody here that doesn't know Eric uh, would, would uh, wonder about if you knew what he does. He's, he's the goalie on the lacrosse team. So he, in effect, stands up and lets people throw balls at 100 miles an hour at him. So I think he's very brave as an athlete, and now I, I see him being very brave as an individual. So thank you, Eric. All right, we'll look forward to see the finished product. Sure, yeah. Oh, can I, sorry, can I add to your comment in saying that, um, Eric, part of the whole process, whether you had considered the policy change or not, the expectation was to, for him to come and make a presentation to you all and step up in regards to verbal in a different arena and come out feeling like a winner. So this was a good opportunity for him to do and I hope to have more students who are finding themselves in trouble be able to make a presentation holding them more accountable to their words. In this case it was three captains who came and found me in the morning down in my classroom. I'm hard to find. They came and found me. Eric didn't. He was taking the consequence knowing that he deserved it. They came and found me and said can we do something about this? Can we look at how we can keep a player with us because we know what it means to him to be part of us and what we can give him as far as support. So the more peer review support that happens around here, that, that peer justice is really critical. And in this case, it was played out and it's kind of the PBGR way of doing things around discipline as well. Sounds great. Thank you. Sure. I know, um, um, Jeff Kaufman, the, the track coach, is very against um, suspending people from practice for all the reasons that you guys were talking about. Um, so what he had, has done in the past is he works with them outside of practice. But the problem with that is he was single, now he's married and he's not a kid. So, so um, yeah. We look forward to seeing the, the final proposal in June. Principal Joe, you want to go first? I'll vote. Thank you. Uh, some, some thank yous. First, I, and this is a stressful time of year in a school. Uh, a lot of things going on. It's, a lot of pressure to get things closed down. Um, I want to offer thanks to uh, to Tom and to Deb for the work she did getting the, the process to work this process as quickly as they did. Uh, the decision uh, it's important to know that you're not the principal, and uh, that that part is going to uh, may add different anxieties, but. Uh, at least it's a little more known than it has been. It's got to be a valuable and appreciative process. Um, we have with kneecaps coming up tomorrow and, and Wednesday. Uh, there's a number of other with testing. We've got AP tests going on um, for the last week. Uh, Susan Dunn, who's a para who uh, works with us, has done, um, has done, is done. Uh, it is also the uh, the assessment coordinator for the high school. And if you take a look at the map of the building use over the next couple of days, you're going to see them uh, finding spaces to, to give the assessments because <coughs> of additional requirements uh, uh, based on IEPs and 504 plans as to who needs to be tested separately and under specific testing. Uh, circumstances makes this a uh, uh, an owner it's an onerous task to put this together and uh, we're really appreciative that we have uh, are able to have someone who can do this and is organized enough to do that in addition 
once again that the uh, parents group has showed their support for the is showing their support for the the whole uh, assessment process by uh, preparing special snacks over the, over the two days. This time it's only two days. They, mm -hmm. In the fall, it's uh, it's even harder. But it makes a significant difference to our kids to see that parents care enough to step up and do something special for them at the same time as we're asking them to step up and do something special for them. For the school, not all of us support the tests themselves, but we have to support the process. Mm -hmm. now. It's just—it's another community uh, effort that's really valued. Um, in addition, as we added these uh, activities, figuring that uh, the kids were being assessed or doing a community service, that uh, we have other community service activities that will be sure as take continues to take a leadership effort on it um, and has created activities that these kids remember, um, that the communities remember, and an individual uh, specific around Camp to come to things in the larger community benefit from. Uh, I, I just think it's a remarkable process and uh, I don't know if it ever gets enough publicity. Uh, this uh, the 18th next uh, this Saturday uh, the environmental club and the junior class I think it's the junior class are support are, uh, have been uh, invited by Addison Waste Solid Waste District to host um, an e waste uh, day and it's going to be here in the parking lot and what that means is while they provide some of the labor. Uh, whoever it is in the state that comes to collect all of any, any, and basically it's anything with a court is what I've been told. Um, we'll, we'll see how that pans out when people show up with lamps and things. Um, Peter, that's for the senior class and it's supporting project graduation. Uh, okay, so senior so class. So part of it is uh, the seniors and the other part is the uh, environmental club and uh, which is, I think they're targeting to support the composting project. So those, those two groups are working together, and uh, anyway, they, is there some kind of are they charging money for it or no? No, no, uh, no but they, they're, they're buying this. They buy the pieces. Oh, the pieces okay. Are, are bought in some way. Right. Okay. And the, that. Yeah. No, uh, that's that money. I know that part. Right. That's why I asked. Okay. That's that's where the, the fundraising. Is. Um, it's something special that we've been asked to be able to, to host this, um, and it's open. Normally it's restricted to the, the local town, and now they've, they've opened it up. It's not just the town or the county, but anybody. So if you've got any businesses uh, that have, uh, that are hoarding things or storing things they don't need anymore, uh, we'll take them. Uh, so that. Um, on June 4, uh, for the third, of the, this is the third year uh, where Celebrating Middle School Scholar Leaders. Um, it's a fascinating process uh, in that we, every crew in, mid, in middle school, not uh, eighth grade crew, nominates one of their members uh, as a scholar leader. Those uh, those kids, those twelve, are brought to the uh, to a faculty meeting plus um, other kids, uh, the teachers that felt the significant scholar leaders. And we have one of the best staff meetings of the year when we sit around and talk about kids who have done remarkable things, uh, noteworthy, and we have to select among those uh, nominated uh, two of them to represent the school. This is sponsored by uh, the Vermont and the New England Middle School Association and the Principals Association. Um, it's, it's only a black and it's only a dinner, but it is such a great process for the school and an opportunity for us to recognize uh, scholarship and leadership and celebrate not only the two who are selected, but all those kids who are uh, nominated by their crews. And uh, teachers have talked about the kind of conversations that have in the crew that they really value. Uh, capstone completions are uh, the, also that same week in June. Have to uh, 
get on the calendar with those specific dates. So I think it's the, uh, the fourth in school, and then they, uh, I think it's the night of the sixth of June that they'll be <coughs> cached on the displays. Kids are doing a nice job of working on this. Um, we're all learning from the process. Um, I did hear a complaint today that uh, uh, they didn't like being the first, uh, first class to do it. Um, but I pointed out if they weren't the first class, they would never be able to do it. If it wasn't a first class, they'd never be able to do it. And I at least had left them thinking about that concept. Uh, it will be interesting as we continue. I mean, I think the kids are, as usual, are buying into the process. However, there are kids who will not be uh, complete with all the events by uh, June 7th. And those kids will not step up with everyone else involved you know, in conversations with the family. But we're staffed during the summer to have them come back, and uh, there's a month when they would be able to uh, complete their project. I'm hoping, hopeful, that all of those uh, will do it during that time. Uh, the question that we have stated clearly that completing a big capstone is a requirement to step up. So uh, we'll see what happens. August. So you said June 6th in the evening, there's a uh, rollout night, so if you happen to have a middle school student participating in this, that's yeah. something for all eight, that would be for all eight, for, specifically it's eight great kids who would be presenting, it should be everything. It's public, it's public, it's public, it's public. there will be more written uh, information about that. Uh, we didn't talk about June 10th, which is, uh, yeah, this is another shift, uh, June 10th, at 1.30, it's underclass uh, recognitions. In the past, this has been an evening event. Am I right? We're still on this? Yes, I I, I, I'm just amazed at how, at how many high school initiatives you're covering. I appreciate it. <laughs> 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 Makes it a lot easier. It comes from being part of the underclass. Yeah. Uh, and so that, that is occurring uh, at that, uh, that afternoon. More the explanation about what the flat is likely to be around that. Uh, the last thing I wanted to point, I do the weekend, clearly take that. Um, and the other, the other is oh, the savor the interaction. Yeah. Oh, believe me. Believe me. The, uh, the other uh, thing I would like to point out is that it's not something we often have conversations about, but there, there are a number of toxic cleaners that are used uh, to any institution, any large building, clean um, on his own initiative because he thinks it's the, the right thing to do. Bob has made uh, some significant efforts to rid the, the cleaning uh, closets uh, and the building of these toxic materials. Is using uh, uh, has found ways to get people to loan us uh, equipment to uh, use ozone uh, ozonation to uh, energize uh, its water to uh, do some cleaning that has been done with toxic materials before. And uh, I think that we're celebrating. So, oh, three. Thank you. Peter, I have one question. Um, you mentioned about there's a subset of eighth graders who may not step up and they'll have the summer through the sale program to, I'm assuming it's a sale program. That's correct. In conjunction. Um, what kind of continuity is there going to be with, with those students on, on your departure? Are you going to pass the baton to Stephanie or, or uh, well, what I do mean, you anticipate? I certainly would hope to them that this is something that, that that particular announcement has just occurred, and I would certainly hope to and be available to do that. Um, however, the kids will all, already be part of uh, SAIL. Deb, uh, Deb White is <coughs> the teacher that's going to be working with those kids. Uh, so the continuity is, is not good. I was just looking for a little reassurance sure. there. Uh, and I'm sure parents are going to be asking the same thing as I have conversations with them. Uh, Oh, actually, I would hope they'd be unsettled about it enough so that they would complete their capstones before I go. We <laughs> don't have to worry about it. Yes, thank you. The 
paradigm that we learned about was uh, when Colchester High School um, made their uh, their exit tickets in freshman year, they uh, right into a standard, and they had over, I believe it was over Bill Rich told us over 20 kids didn't make it. The parents were up in arms, and saying, "Oh my God, oh my God, the kids got to go to school all summer," and most of them complete, almost every single one of them completed it within two days. You know, <laughs> and so we're assuming that, that, that our kids aren't that much different, and then perhaps that will happen here too. Um, but that's the reality, it's, it's just once you realize your summer's gone, so there's a different work ethic normally. Um, but they're gonna eat well. They are going to eat great. And uh, which is the miraculous, and that and that really introduces a new paradigm for uh, high school education. In Vermont is you know the flexible pathways uh, philosophy is going to demand that we keep open summer school opportunities. And as the funding for that dries up, we're going to have to get creative and figure out either by contract or by you know or, or, or by other means, we're going to have to figure out how to get more flexible to provide. Um, instruction during the summer. I mean, Nancy does um, this miraculous job with kids who just need to catch up to get to where they need to be in math. And, uh, and how many weeks does that go? Yeah, a week. Yeah, so, I mean, those are the kinds of things that, you know, we need to be able to guarantee to our, our constituents. Anyway, I just thought I'd point out that that's, that's really uh, coming true. Um, just a, a note from the front, the educational quality standards are, um, are going to be, we're going to have one more meeting on them than some of the Vermont State School Board. And uh, as soon as I get the, uh, the redrafted uh, standards, I'm going to send them to the board electronically uh, and see what you think. There, uh, there are some radical things in there. Uh, there are some real, real changes. Uh, not so many inputs. You know, we're not talking about how many square feet each kid needs in a classroom. Uh, instead, we're talking about what uh, that, for instance, every high school student has to have a, a blended experience somewhere where they use technology and instruction. Uh, another one is that they need to have all the majors in some form every year of their high school education. Right now, you can have you can skip a year of math. You can just do three math. Nobody around here does, but uh, you could, or and, and so on. You could do three years of social studies in math, three point five, and uh, it's saying that somehow, in an interdisciplinary manner, you have to be you have to be learning all the core areas, and I think that's very cool. It's things like that that are radically different and cause people pause. I'd like to talk more about. Um, our kids and um, I just I'm always struck when I when I go when I go to prom how great our kids are and uh, sometimes I think it's something I did and then I realized better because they were great eight years ago when I got here and uh, it's really remarkable to see our kids at prom it's really cool and I'm not going to name any names but for instance Certain people were dancing with one of our wheel back, wheelchair bound students, and he had about as good an evening as I think he's probably had. Maybe ever. I wouldn't name any names or point looking in any directions. Um, but the, the level of, uh, of kindness and of uh, and, and just clean fun that was going on was pretty remarkable, and uh, it's humbling to be around so many good kids and. Uh, from every walk of life in this part of Addison County. It's really remarkable. Uh, I'd also like to talk just briefly about, uh, we had a VPA Hall of Fame banquet uh, two Fridays ago, and Roland Guyette from Virginia went in to the Hall of Fame, and uh, Peter uh, brought him there, and uh, June Sargent, um, <coughs> was one of the uh, movers and shakers, our elementary principal, to getting him in. She's an executive council member. It was really a proud moment, and his speech was reflective of the Virginia community in general and how we value kids. And it was really pretty remarkable. Um, just as a sidebar, my 
86-year-old football coach was there, and my 82-year-old freshman math teacher was there, who still claims he still has a bruise from Roland elbowing him in the, in the chest going for a rebound in Haverhill, New Hampshire in 1950-something. Um, but it's really remarkable if any of you ever get a chance if you ever get a chance to go uh, to one of those, it's really, it's really great. Um, what was I supposed to fill in on, Peter? You started? It's happening on June 10th there. Ah, oh, June 10th. In the no, day? It, in, in the day. We've always had underclass, um, underclass awards at night, and underclass sounds kind of bad. Uh, it means fresh, freshman, sophomore, and junior awards, 9th, 10th, 11th grade. And every department hands them out. They hand out one, as a, one for achievement. Uh, one for challenging oneself, and one for meeting all five guidelines in every department, in every grade. And uh, we have no idea if we're going to be able to get through it. We're trying to do something electronically where we're going to uh, have a running um, slideshow of, of the kids, their pictures, their accomplishments, and back of them just as the teachers read off the, the award winners. The reason we're moving into today because we're award, we're giving these kids awards, these students awards, in a vacuum. None of the other kids see it. it its effect on other kids, on younger kids, is minimal because they never see it. They some of them not, never even hear about it. The drawback it may be that we don't get as many parents, although we send out postcards to every every parent. I think is that true? Okay. Uh, I, I think it was. Email. There was a message that went out there, postcards, if, if it didn't go, I'm not sure if they all Yeah, I'm not sure if they all are. But anyway, so it's going to be in the afternoon at 1 30 on the 10th in the big, uh, it's actually going to be in the auditorium. And uh, because we, we, or is it, are we still fighting over that? We're still fighting over that. Uh, it may be in the auditorium. It may be that the middle school still has something going there, but you know, he's, he's a short timer and we really don't need to. How to talk to them anymore. Um, but that is a change, and it's, it's definitely, we're definitely going to get a little flag for it. Every time you change something, you get some flag. Uh, this, uh, over the time I've been here, and it's largely because of stuff that Ed's promoted, is that these recognition ceremonies have become so much more student centered and student sensitive. It was always an award to a kid, but uh, it was only. It was only those kids being awarded. Uh, the, the same thing happen, has happened in senior recognition as well. Uh, and I, I heard after the senior night when we, we started with a uh, well, the morning meeting teacher uh, celebrated the 10 or 12 kids that he or she knows well and speaks about them from four years of knowing that kid a parent came back and said, uh, I finally understand why you have morning meeting teachers. Uh, because someone who knows that kid really celebrates it at the end, and every kid gets celebrated. Uh, that's not the, the, the underclass awards recognition, but it's all part of the same fabric about how important we really need to practice how important every kid is. And that's looking forward to the day when we have uh, parent-teacher conferences that are that are facilitated by the morning meeting teacher and just offer um, evidences from the academic teachers and concentrate more on the PBGR portfolios and actual going in and checking to see how you know Susie's doing in, in um, you know biology and so I mean we're moving rapidly toward a much more student-centered world and. Uh, this is one of those steps in, in the chain. So that's all I have. I don't talk too much. Tom? Um, just a couple of uh, things. Just a reminder of uh, the vote tomorrow evening, or tomorrow. Um, um, the SU meeting on Wednesday, attendance is incurred. Um, and I also wanted to thank those uh, members of the board who took time to respond to. Um, the Senate Finance Committee and the potential actions uh, that they were considering um, in H538, uh, which had to do with uh, uh, changes to law that would directly impact, I think, in a negative way, um, education law and specifically the 
funding system. Um, it did cause, I don't, know, I don't know if some of you got responses, I got a response um, from the chair of the Senate Committee, and its committee yes. saying they would unlikely take any action in this session. So we're still watching, but it appears to be slow things. Did you get a response? Yes. yes. Did you, did you get, I, I did. did. Yes. I got a poll of eight responses, but only two of them were meaningful. I sent my to my local people, not the chair, to you, but I didn't get. I didn't get any response. I sent it to the entire Senate. Well, I saw what you did. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 and I saw what you did. You just jumped on the his. I, I, took the time, I took the time to make a distribution list yep. of their legislative addresses and their, yep. their secondary and, in some case, third email all right, addresses. Good man. So they yep. all heard from me. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I say, I got nine eight or nine responses. Um, most of them were, I get a ton of emails, I read them and I'm going to take action, it's important to me, but you know, it, it could be weeks before I respond to you, but I did get two meaningful responses, and I think Tim actually had one. What was the specific issue I didn't get? The, um, the items that they were looking at was, um, you are familiar with the two vote question, um, they were looking to repeal its sunset. In other words, keep it in place. Um, they were re uh, looking to reduce the excess spending from 125 to 110%. Uh, percent. Um, budget cap. Um, if we were proposing a budget that there would be a cap on the budget increase of 1% plus inflation. Um, and uh, that would require, if it went above that, it would require a 60 cent supermajority vote. Um, a required vote on the budget of 25% of the registered voters. And if that didn't happen, we would revert to the budget from the prior year. Um, and then the final thing was a topic they've been discussing for several years now is raising up small school grants. So they were directly um, eyeballing the funding system, and looking for ways to curb this funding. Last thing I want to do is uh, again uh, thank the committee uh, search for the for Peter's replacement. Uh, the committee did awesome work in a very short period of time, uh, scheduled uh, scheduling in contact uh, through my able assistant Larry Martin, and uh, I think uh, Deb's leadership of the, of the committee was outstanding and caused us to be in a position where we were as of today uh, to hire a highly qualified person. And this time of year, I have to say I'm amazed. And one good thing about Stephanie is that um, she had one idea in mind, and if that wasn't going to work out, she would remain at the 32 severe most fortunate. And okay. yeah, she wants to be. Is that it? That's it. Kathy. Audits for four members. Uh, just for your eleven. Audits. Came to my attention we never reviewed fiscal year eleven, so we would take those home and we'll um, review them in depth at the June board meeting. And I will also have the FR12 draft audit at the June board meeting. Our auditors now don't do any audit work between the beginning of January and April 15th, so we kind of have
And then these two letters are. And then there's two letters. So this would be like a government auditing standards report. That's the additional report. Yeah. And there's an internal control report. Okay. So these letters are summaries of what's in the actual findings? Uh, these would okay. be recommendations required. Okay. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to go over first this um, projection that I've done. Again, it's a 30 year an estimate for um, two steps. And this is preliminary. I'm going to do my best judgment on this. Um, so looking at revenues, we've received today revenues of six million seven hundred and eighty five thousand dollars. We have yet to receive um, education fund payments and those are basically um, property tax payments from the community. And so we will receive those between now and June. And those are final numbers we have final supports um, from the city. Um, the Hannaford on behalf payment, that's that's what Dermal and I am told to make um, it's an income and an expense. We don't have a final number on that. That's contingent upon um, what the legislature um, decides. So we don't, we don't have a final number, but it is the same number um, in revenues, activities, and expenses. And then I'm estimating that we will still receive about $400,000 in special ed reimbursements. Um, and that, that could be a higher amount. But I think about $400,000 um, should be with the end um, We've already received today about $600,000. Last year we received about a million dollars in reimbursement, so I think that this number could be a little higher. Than the um, so just as an estimate, as of right now, that our revenues would be about $9 million. Our expenditures to date are eight million six twenty-four. We have encumbrances that are um, mainly salary related, so it would be salary, social security, and then municipal retirement for the, um, those employees. So that's nine hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars. And then I just estimated from here on to the end of June um, benefits. We have to accrue July and August benefits for. Um, and other staff, so estimating us $275,000. Um, we still have to pay the tax anticipation interest um, at, before the end of June of 35. We have some lease payments um, and no payments for, for so for the month of June, that would be $4,200. And estimating our um, utilities will be $12,000 for the month of June. And then there's the Hannaford payment. So if we don't spend any other fund on anything else, I'm estimating about $10,263,000 in expenses for a deficit of $864,000. Now, just to compare this to our budget, we had budgeted $9,009,000. So we will be taking in more revenues in that mainly in special ed reimbursement of about $300,000. Quick question. Sorry. Yes. Not yet. Did, how, how quick? Did we not anticipate that special ed service that we had to provide and therefore the reimbursement that we're getting when we made last year's budget a year and a half ago? No. We did anticipate it or we did not? We did not anticipate it. Okay. Just switched. All right. Mm -hmm. Hence the form so, of the so then our budgeted expenses were $9,700,000. So we are over budget in our expenditures of $561,000 estimated. Now, the um, deficit in our budget, so we had a prior year surplus that was estimated of six ninety three. dollars so, so what would happen in our budgeting process is that we um, had less revenues that we needed to raise because we had a surplus. So what this is saying is that we are going to be over budget in an additional deficit situation of about $170,000. Now, you'll notice that I said 
we aren't going to spend anything else in any other category. Um, and we, I'm sure we do have some other expenses that we need to incur. We are under a budget phase, so I anticipate um, you know, that we need one month left, a month and a half left, and anticipate that we really don't have um, a lot more. I mean, this was just quick. I mean, you know, I'm sure there are other expenses that we do need to pay for that. Um, and just to take, um, just to go now to the, the printout that I um, gave to you. Um, so um, we have our balance sheet. Um, this on top and in schools, the revenues are included in the balance sheet. So there in the middle of the page where begin our revenues um, with tuition and interest income. So we'll see, I mean, we pretty much can tell right now um, some items that um, we might not make budget on. For instance, we budgeted 40,000 for interest income. We've only made 18,000, so we're not gonna make the balance of that um, from now until the end of June. Athletic receipts were over budget, um, so we went to under budget. The local assessments there are 4 million 349. If you go down a few lines to state that funds, you need to combine those two and compare to the budget for state that funds. Transportation grant will under the balance of that. Mainstream lot grant we received that. <coughs> if you're special ed, here's where I think that will. Um, we will get a lot of But the 750 budgeted plus the extraordinary on 100 is 850. I'm thinking we'll probably get 1.1 million or so um, with that by the time that we go. So we haven't received any driver's ed yet. That will come after year end. Um, tuition reduction. Um, I'm told by the state what number to put in here. They would pay, um, like pay other schools for um, an adult person and then if an adult from the gym, say, went to technical center in Burlington, the state would pay on behalf of that adult and then find it in another Vocational transportation reimbursement, I'm expecting the second half of that. Asset 65,000. Um, that was the sale of our school bus fleet. Oh. And then um, the rest of the food service, we don't really do a lot with the rest of the central area. We have our food service there, um, our long term debt, student activities. Um, I don't usually bring this report to show you the work that I want to go over the values. Um, some scholarship funds are there, our 21 C grant, which is our school program, um, and then some other grants. We now we have a lead innovative schools grant this year, um, our rallying grant, our Nellie Manning grant.
is, the, is there a summary of everything? I think somewhere in the sheet in the budget to actual the total is the kind of the total tally. Yeah, there is as we get going. I just wanted to look at um, special ed on page six. We are over budget of four hundred and eight thousand dollars. <coughs> This is the first time we've seen this display, right? I think we've probably seen it before, but we don't have writing in it. We don't really, okay. I don't do a lot with this balance sheet during the year. Most of it is, is stuff that I do with you, Ryan. Um, it's just to show you writing. So, um, next month, well, you know, we're just closing in on that year end. And I'll have the food service contract. Maybe next one. Okay. <coughs> I still want to think about it like that. Okay. Compared to the annual report. Okay. Sounds good. I don't know. I don't know. I don't either. Okay. Uh, we're going to go back to Ed for an addendum to the high school report. Yes, because I just found out about this today, like at around 3 o'clock. Um, we had our kids come back from the Congressional Art Show in uh, Montpelier. And Alicia Gendro won the uh, the congressional uh, medal for her painting, and Victoria Verber won the People's Award, which is voted by everybody at the uh, at the congressional art show. So we we consistently medal and win awards over there uh, every year. But uh, if anybody has a chance to see uh, Victoria's painting down in the, up on the gym wall going out to the athletic lobby. Uh, it's of a girl in profile, her sister, and it is one of the best paintings that's, we've had. That's not the other night. Yeah, that's just miraculous. That's a really cool piece. So our art department is really excellent. And Alicia's was, uh, yeah, it did. This first one was snow. Fun. So I just wanted to add that because I had forgotten to write it down. Kurt, do you have something on the end of the Center? They do not. Unfortunately, they, uh, the meeting was the same night as the canceled uh, Vermont State Music Parade, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I feel like I have to say was very poorly handled. But, I mean, they had, all the kids were there, all the buses were there, all the parades were there, all the people were there, and 10 minutes before the parade, they canceled. Any other action items? So that circles me back to public communication. Carol, is this something new or is this the same old issues about audits and budgets? Well, I was wondering if you'd consider um, um, inviting the auditor. Um, you know, I've been told that you, know, you don't get shocked if, if there's material weaknesses. What you want to do is you want to um, 
look at are they still there the next year and we have some material weaknesses that have been been within the audit audits for a few years and and differences on you know to find out from the auditor themselves you know when they release what is why are they so excessively late um, because so far superintendent o'brien has has been his own you know balance um, check and balance and uh, it would be nice um, since they are the authority on the audits to, to have them present so your suggestion or your 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 question would be consider inviting him the auditors to the Jan June meeting. <coughs> I think we'd be more successful submitting the questions to the auditors and the response to them. Would there be a charge for them to pay? Most assuredly. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's uh, <coughs> that's I figured it would be. Um, so so you're telling me well but you're telling me if um, I have old stuff, you're not answering it anymore because you just said, are you going to rehash things? Um, you didn't use my exact words, but... If, you, if it was just going to be the same, you know, questions that have already been addressed, I know you've been okay. given reams of paperwork, then I wasn't going to spend a lot of time on it. They haven't been addressed, though. I have not been given a clear... Um, conversation and understanding between um, the actual budget surplus or deficit and the swing where it comes back to the auditors I and mean, the auditors the, the uh, proposed budget in two years. Um, you know, for for example, you just have a uh, the 2013 deficit of over $600,000, and yet um, the proposed revenues, the estimate, um, was $450,000. Um, um, but anyways, I recalculated my numbers. I'm going to let you, I'm going to give them to you again. I have included you guys in my emails I'm still not getting answers and so yeah I do need to come to the school board um, so these are my three questions that haven't been answered Tom O'Brien's um, response which you guys look at that and <coughs> and then my recalculation um, is this something we've right. already have you already sent this to us? No, not the okay. not the new numbers. This email was not sent to us. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Right, because I was going to read I, I don't need it if well, I Well you need to read the, the numbers. You can throw it away if you want. Okay. okay. I, I just I'd rather not take something that I already have. Because I've read it once and I don't want to read it again. Okay. But what you're saying is what what's on this piece of paper you've already sent to me. No, I, I, I gave the board numbers in November, and then I was corrected with the formulation. Then Superintendent O'Brien, I gave you numbers the last time Superintendent O'Brien did a formulation for me. And so I'm, I'm just trying to make sense of it, and I think we have the right to do that. And, but now the, the numbers still don't question, agree. Is what you passed out tonight new? Or is it something I already have? The recalculation is no. So what's on that piece of paper is something I don't have. Yes, sir. Right, the back two okay. pages. May I have a copy? Yes. Okay. I, it has nothing to do with the content. I just if it's if it's already in my inbox, Carol, I don't want to read it again. Because I've already read it once. <coughs> You see what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying, but okay. I'm having a difficulty getting answered since 2010. If you want to go from my emails, um, I have them there. And, no, not from you guys, from Superintendent O'Brien. I have only come to you guys because um, I struggle with Superintendent O'Brien. Have you taken Kathy up on her offer to sit down and look at things? 
Neil, do you know what? I, I have a right to keep myself safe. You have an aggressive um, administration. And in and, and November, Neil. I respectfully disagree. Okay, you can, but you can't make me of go course somewhere. Not. Nope, I, I, that option, absolutely not. If you feel unsafe for some reason. In November, I was very detailed from when the, the Vermont School Board um, Googled my husband's name, and I went through order of events where my husband was attacked. And I'm not. No, absolutely. We know, again, that's a, that's a different issue than what you're bringing up here. We I'll let it go with you if you'll stop pushing me to go into a private conversation. Because um, I do have valid reasons of why I won't meet with Superintendent O'Brien alone. Um, this is um, this is difficult um, for me, but my my connection with intoxication um, and hurting other people's life isn't with drunk driving. It's with um, um, fear and. One thing I have, I, I went to Superintendent O'Brien um, when, the, when the newspaper came out and I went and sat with Mr. Wedley. Um, and I keep hearing a lot of, um, you know, working with the children and letting them know, you know, last, 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 um, Sorry. Um, last month it was Mr. Wedley said, wiggle your toes before you get in a car. And so my question, with, with all respect, um, no one has really dealt with publicly, and, and here was a boy putting his, his, um, his you know, um, emotions and his thoughts before you, um, that there was fear that caused um, someone within the family to call 911 twice. And that concerns me with, um, with part of the, the incident with Mr. Webber. Uh, we're not going to talk about the personnel incident in an open meeting. It's, it's already been handled. It's, that was last year. I don't, I don't understand why you're bringing it up again. Because it has never been talked about. The whole idea of intoxication connected with, with fear. Um, and, and it's real. I've, I've raised three kids and, and who come from that type of setting. I'm not standing in judgment, but it is a message that children need to hear, even, even equally with um, the whole idea that you shouldn't get in a car. But you should never compromise yourself with alcohol that creates fear um, to the point where, where um, you know, someone dials 911. Carol, this is of fear. A completely a confidential personnel matter. I understand your concern but we can't go there in a public meeting. Okay. But this is executive session material entirely. Okay. I, I, just, I don't know how to answer to your concerns because they are not, unfortunately and respectfully, not appropriate for this venue here. I understand what you're saying. It's been said in the paper. I'll find them good. But. But see, the, the, the thing with the appropriateness is that it's okay to talk about the in, intoxication and connection with drunk driving. That's what I'm saying. That's been something that has been um, very open within the, the school board. And that's why I didn't say anything, you know, until last month just kind of triggered me um, when, when the whole idea of, well, think, I wiggle your toes before you get into a car. And that was something that Mr. Webley had said. And, and um, 
and the whole idea of, well, what do people need? Because we have, we have an epidemic out there. What do people need to do when they're in, intoxicated and they're about ready to cause fear on someone? I'll stop. Is there any other public comment for tonight? We have a need for an executive session. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion items? So I'd remind everybody about the telemorning you did the SU meeting on Wednesday night and our next regular board meeting on the 10th. And don't forget to vote tomorrow at your polling place. And we'll be adjourned.